If you're setting up a Cisco Business 350 switch and have decided to use a Windows 2019 server, you've come to the right place. But before we go further, it's important to note that Cisco does not support third-party applications and services. This example is shown for demonstration purposes only, since a Windows server can be used with Cisco Business 350 series switches. In this episode of Cisco Tech Talk, I'll show you how to manage your Radius settings on a Windows 2019 server with a CBS 350 switch and 802.1x client. Today, I'll show the network topology overview of the 802.1x client, the Radius client, and the Radius server. I'll use my Network Policy and Access Services, or NPAS settings, to provide authentication for 802.1x client to an authenticator. I'll show the settings on the Windows server, settings on the switch, and the Windows 10 client. It may sound confusing, but by the end of this video, you will see how easy it is to do. This screen here is the network topology layout using graphics. First on the left, I start with the supplicant because it's seeking access to the network resources. The 802.1x client is a PC that uses Windows 10 Enterprise Operating System. Next is the authenticator or the Radius client, which is a CBS 350 switch. This is the authenticator that controls the network access. It has an IP address of 172.16.1.10. These are connected via the LAN to the authentication server or the Radius server, which is configured on a Windows 2019 server. Its IP address is 172.16.1.4. Now that I've shown you the overview of how everything works together, I'll look at some of the settings. The Windows 2019 server has already been configured as an Active Directory domain controller. The RADIUS or NPAS server feature has been enabled. On the local server menu here, I can see that the Ethernet IP is 172.16.1.4 and the operating system is Microsoft Windows Server 2019. On the NPAS menu, I'll look at the server and confirm the IP address is 172.16.1.4. Now I'll open the Network Policy Server Settings. I'll click on Radius Clients and Servers on the left panel and under that, I'll select Radius Clients to see what switches are enabled for this network. On the Settings tab, I see the CBS 350 switch has been added as a Radius Client. Then on the Advanced tab, I see the name of the vendor, which in this case is Cisco. Now I'll close this window and then go to the left panel and click on the Connection Request Policies option under the Policies menu. If I double-click Secure Wired Ethernet Connections, it opens a new window. And in the Overview tab, I can see that Policy State has been enabled. Under the Conditions tab, I see that the condition is set to NAS Port Type. The Settings tab displays all the default settings. Now, back in the Network Policies menu, I see that the policy named Secure Wired Ethernet Connections is enabled for this server. When I double click on it, I can see the settings for this policy. Under the Overview tab, I can see that the policy state has been enabled. I can also see that Access Permission has been set to Grant Access. Under the Conditions tab, I see that the NAS port type condition shows Ethernet as the media type. Under the Constraints tab, I see that Microsoft Encrypted Authentication version 2 has also been selected. The EAP types are shown here on this window. Now I'll click on the Settings tab and see that under Attributes, Frame Protocol is PPP and Service Type is Framed. I'll exit this window and open the Local Server Settings again but this time, I'll click on the Tasks drop-down on the right side of the screen. I'll click on the Active Directory Users and Computers, and then click Managed Service Accounts. This screen shows the Active Directory Users and Computers, and I see that Cisco Lab is listed here as User. When I double-click on Cisco Lab, 
it opens another window showing me all the properties for this user. Here I see the first and last name are Cisco Lab, and the display name is a combination of the two. Now I'll click on the account tab to see the user logon name. When I select the dial-in tab, it shows me that the network access permission has been set to allow access. Under the remote control tab, I can see that enable remote control has been selected and so it's enabled as well. Now I'll click on the tab called member of and check that it's a member of the domain users that was shown in the account tab. After looking and checking all the settings in the server manager, I'll log into my switch to configure the required settings. First, I'll log in with my username and password. Now that I've logged in, the first thing I need to do is change the mode from basic to advanced in the top right corner of the screen. This is how I get the options that I need to configure the switch. I need to click on System Summary under Status and Statistics in the left panel and confirm that my firmware version is up to date. In this case, it's 3.1.1.7. Now I'll open the security menu and select the Radius Client option. On this page, I'm going to set the Radius Accounting to Port-Based Access Control 802.1x, Mac-Based Web Authentication, and I'll keep the rest of the configuration with the default settings. Now at the bottom of the page in the Radius table, I'm going to click on the plus icon to add a new Radius server. I'll add the details on the Add Radius server page. First, I'll keep the buttons that are already selected here to add the server definition by IP address, and the IP version will stay as version 4. Next, in the Server IP Address Name field, I'll enter the IP address that we saw earlier. It will be 172.16.1.4 and then I'll enter one as the priority. Next, I'll change the keystring setting to user defined, plain text, and then enter the keystring into the field. I won't change any other settings on this page. Now I'll click apply to save this configuration and I should see the notification at the top of the screen that it was successful. When I click the close button, I can see the server I just configured is now added to the Radius table back on the Radius client page. Now I'll open the 802.1x authentication option from the left panel. Next, I'll select the properties page. First thing I need to do is enable the port-based authentication. All the other settings here will stay the same. So again, I'll click the apply button. I should see the success notification at the top of the screen when it's done and successful. Now I'll select the port authentication page where I'm going to select the port number where the Windows 10 client is going to connect. On this page, I'll select the switch port 2 under the port authentication table and then click the edit button at the top. On this page, I'll change the setting for administrative port control to auto then I need to check and make sure that 802.1x based authentication is also checked and enabled. I'll keep the other parameters here set to the default and then click the apply button once again. I can close this window when I see the notification at the top of the window that this was successful. Back in this window, I can see that the port authentication table now shows that administrative port control is now set to auto for switch port number two. Next, I'll open the VLAN management page and then select the port VLAN membership page where I can see the VLAN mapping on that port that I just configured. I see that GE2 interface is set to access mode and VLAN one is allowed on that switch port. Now the final step is to configure the Windows 10 client. To do that, I need to open the Run option on that system using the Start menu, or by pressing the Windows and R button together on the keyboard. I'll enter services.msc in this field and then click OK. In the Services window, I'll scroll down the page and double click on Wired Auto Config. This opens the window where I can check and make sure all the settings are what I want. Everything looks good. 
Startup type is selected as automatic. So now I'll click OK to exit this window. Now I need to configure the network interface card. Back in the run command window, I'll enter ncpa.cpl and click OK. This opens the network properties window where I can double click on the ethernet interface to open a new window. Under the authentication tab, I'll make sure that enable IEEE 802.1x authentication is checked. I'll also click on the settings button here to make sure that enable fast reconnect is also checked. But first, I need to make sure that the network authentication method is secured password EAP MS Chap V2. Also, I need to make sure that the checkbox next to verify the server's identity by validating the certificate is not checked. I'll click OK now. I'll click the additional settings button now to open the advanced settings tab for the 802.1x. I need to make sure that specify authentication mode is enabled. In the drop-down menu under Specify Authentication Mode, I need to make sure that User Authentication is selected. Then I'll disable the checkbox for Enable Single Sign-On for this network. Now I'll click OK and then OK again to close these screens. My Windows 10 system will get connected to the GE2 port, where it will then get the username and password authentication prompt. With the username and admin password, my system will be authenticated. To save this configuration, I just need to click the Save icon at the top of the page. This is how I configured my Windows Server 2019 Radius settings with a CBS 350 switch and 802.1x client. If this configuration is right for you, it's your turn. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.